I'm just waiting to see if we have any more people joining us. I can see myself and I can see hosts. Um, I'm just checking in with a technical check for Vanity Fair, the tech folks. If you could just let me know, I don't know if I'm able to see from my end, if there are people that have joined us that are outside of um, myself and the presenter, that would be helpful for me to know, thanks. And also if we have access to um, the chat, I'm not quite sure if folks can access the chat to let me know that they're here or not here. Thanks. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume that maybe more will join us after, but if not, I, I'm going to get started. Um, hard for me to know who's here and who's not here, so I'm just going to assume that we've got some folks and we'll go from there. So hello to folks that are here. My name is Lorna Evans and my pronouns are she, her, L. And I don't know if you're gonna have access to the, the web chat or not, but um, if there are questions, we are gonna take some, I would be willing to take them if you wrote them in the uh, chat and I'd answer them as we go. But if you don't have access to the chat uh, and you can wait till the end of the session, then maybe you can raise your hand and if we can figure that out, we'll, uh, invite you to have a conversation with us. So we're here to learn about the supports and programs and resources available for racialized and other equity seeking students, um, equity deserving, I often like to say. Um, this is meant to be interactive. So again, if you do have questions answered, put them in the chat and we'll try and answer them. So just a few terms there. I'm not going to um, read these to you, but um, terms that we use when we're talking about what is inclusive education, um, what does it mean to, to say that we value diversity, what does it mean when we say that we value equity, and what is inclusive education to us. So that one at the bottom I will read to you um, when we're talking about it. It's re referencing that education is based on the principles of acceptance and inclusion of all students. Um, we want students to see themselves reflected in their curriculum, their physical surroundings, and their broader environment. Um, and we want to make sure that diversity is honored with all individuals and respected. Obviously, we have legal ramifications and things that we need to make sure that we are um, laws that we're following, the protected grounds, the Ontario Human Rights Code, um, the protected grounds are listed that above in the diversity section. And all of that is important that we as educators and we as a district are making sure that we are upholding those human rights. So who are we? Um, we have um, many different parts of our system that work to ensure that inclusive education is happening. Um, work for the equity department, we work um, in tandem and in collaboration with the human rights department. So I've kind of said equity and human rights leadership team there. We also work with the indigenous team as well. So some of the central staff, not all of us, but some of the central staff that are part of the equity team are listed in blue there. Um, myself, I'm an equity instructional coach and there's two other equity instructional coaches, Allison and Brian. Uh, I work closely with Kurt and Nabil, who are student support coordinators, who also work closely with the um, graduation coaches. And Sarah um, is the trans and gender support student coordinator. Our principal is Juliet Robinson and Mary Jane Farish is our superintendent of equity. So then there's some other folks listed there that also help us uh, to do this work. So just some information that we wanted to um, share in terms of support that OCDSB provides for your information. There is an advisory committee on equity and that committee meets um, fairly frequently, once, once a month, um, up to six to eight times for the year. And they help um, the district understand ways that it can provide equitable, inclusive education and, and an equitable work environment as well. So a little bit of what they do is listed there. And another piece of information that we wanted to share with you is that in 2018, the OCDSB adopted and committed to the intent of the UN International Decade for People of African Descent. Uh, and that's coming to a close next year in 2024. And just this past Saturday, there was a, um, a recognition of that. And we continue to do this work. 
So obviously, we know that folks can identify in a variety of ways, and there's lots of intersectionality that takes place. Uh, we're committed to building a culture of caring, which prioritizes the dignity and well-being of students in inclusive and caring classrooms. And we know that our students, our equity-seeking students, equity-deserving students and allies may identify some of the ways that are listed there. And this is not meant to be an exhausted list, but these are some of the equity seeking groups, equity deserving groups that we have identity specific workers who can work with students who identify as indigenous, black, racialized, Muslim, 2SLGBTQ, Jewish, multilingual learners, students with learning attention disabilities, students with disabilities, and those can be visible and non-visible as we know. Representation for all of our students matters. One of the other pieces of uh, support that we have for students that are Black is the uh, Sankofa Center of Excellence Graduation Coach Program. Um, we are committed to advancing the economic success, success of African, Black, and Caribbean students in the OCDSB. And this Center of Excellence is located in two locations. There is one at Richmond High School and another at Woodruff High School. And they are staffed with uh, two Black graduation coaches. Um, part of what they do is uh, a Pathways to Excellence series where they can support students to learn about what they can do after high school. Sometimes they have workshops that are in person and virtual. Uh, and sometimes they partner with, not sometimes, they always partner. We have many partners with a variety of groups and some of those partners are listed below there. In the corner here, I've listed the names of uh, the two current Black graduation coaches. One is uh, Gwen and the other is Joan. Um, Joan works out of Richmond and Gwen works out of Woodruff. So what is the aim of these centers of excellence, the graduation coach program? The aim of it is, as I mentioned, it's for students that identify as African, Black, or Caribbean. Um, any student that identifies as Black is Black, biracial, are welcome to UC spaces. We want to make sure that we are removing barriers so that students can be engaged and learning and we want to be checking in on their well-being. If there's students and families that need help to um, improve their academic outcomes, we want to make sure that we're providing some goal setting for that and make sure that they're able to attain those goals. We identify and facilitate access and connections to other academic supports. So there might be already some supports that are taking place in the school or in the community. And we try to make sure we make those partnerships for that. The role of um, the, the role of, oh, sorry, one second here. The role of the coach also is a, a mentoring role, an advisory role, um, and just something somewhere, somewhere for the students to do a check-in. We want to make sure that they feel safe to have um, conversations with their educators, with people in their situations so that they are being their best, they can be their best selves and uh, succeed. Some other ways that we help uh, in these centers are listed below, including field trips, a credit accumulation, and maybe they need some assistance getting their 40 hours of community service, that can be done as well. And we wanna make sure that they know, students know that even though they're uh, maybe in a Black graduation center, they also have access to student support coordinators as well. So some other supports that are available for our students are outside of these two sites of excellence. If, they, if students are not attending those two sites of excellence, they have access, like as we've mentioned to us as a, a equity instructional coaches. They also have access to the student support coordinators. We have specific Black uh, social workers and other identity-based social workers. For example, there's one for the Indigenous team, um, guidance counselors that are identity-based as well. So if a student wants to speak to somebody um, who identifies the same way as them, they can reach out to somebody um, who, for example, is part of the queer community or other spaces. Um, we have the Virtual Black Excellence Club as a space for students to go to, it's run on Thursdays. We have virtual black excellent virtual clubs for students that identify as Jewish and Muslim as well. We have other uh, equity and diversity clubs, and we have courses that they can also be part of. 
And as well, we have a Reach Ahead summer course for students in grade eight or grade nine students uh, that want to do some learning over the summer and try and get an early start on their either their high school career or if they want to do uh, an extra course and they're already a grade nine student. The Black Student Forum, um, it's happening right now. It started in November, uh, the next cohort of students that are in grade 10 and up. It's a year long course. It runs from November to May. And they have a workshop at the end of the series, at the end of the uh, year. It's on Wednesdays from 5.30 to 9.30. And there's usually two students from each high school that go. Sometimes our students that um, go to volunteer, uh, they've gone before and now they wanna go on a volunteer role or there might be mentors or mentees that are part of that. And I just put the course, the 2021 poster there so folks could see what that looks like. So some community resources. These are some of the resources that we use as a team. These are some of the places that we are connected to. Um, we really try hard to um, use the community because we know that it takes a village to uh, raise our students and to make sure that everybody is getting access to the right supports. So sometimes that means that we might work in particular in the OCDSB side with programming and learning. Um, we might specifically um, work with our, you know, business and learning technology sites. We might do in-house things, but it also means that we work outside of OCDSB and some of the community resources listed on this site are places that we go to for help. Last, sorry, one moment, please. Sorry about that. There's multiple uh, noises going on here. Um, last uh, November, we did, an, on November 9th, we had a equity road trip where we went to Woodruff High School and it was partly in person and partly in virtual. And we have something that's known as the equity roadmap. And if you want to know more about that, you can Google me and we can talk to you more about that. But we set some goals for what we wanted to make sure changes we wanted to do as part of a district, what was important for us. And some of those goals we achieved and some of them we're still working on. And so there was an invitation for students and staff and families to look at the next steps. What other, what more do we need to do? How can we provide um, an inclusive and safe space for folks to work in and learn in? So we're open to that. That invitation is an ongoing invitation. We're open to feedback. If you were part of that, or if you wanna know more about that, please email me. This is a quote that I, I often share. I'm no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I'm changing the things I cannot accept. So we know that education has changed a lot from the time I've gone to school. It can, it's continually changing. And we know that there are some things that we we can do better. So this Angela Davis quote just reminds us that we're constantly changing and we need to be, we need to be the change. Um, if there's something that's not working, we need to know about it and we need to make sure that we can remove those barriers so that we can improve access to learning. So that's in a nutshell is kind of some of the supports that we offer. Obviously that's a, a quick for the rundown. I know that we're giving a, a 15 minute time constraint and so we can't get into everything, but um, you know, if there are any questions that you have or any comments that you have, I'm here. I, I do believe that you might have access to the chat so you can put it in there. You might be able to raise your hand. We have some tech support here. So if something's not working, then we can uh, ask the folks here at Vanity Fairs to help us out. And if you really, are not able to stay for a question or you don't want to use the chat or the hand feature, my email is listed there, lorna.evans at ocdsb.ca. And Nabil is a student coordinator and he is also open to having questions sent his way as well. I don't know if Nabil, if you want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself and check in, I'm going to mute myself and see if that's a possibility. Maybe not. I don't. I don't think Nabil is able to unmute himself there. 
Um, so if there are questions, feel free to raise your hand or if you're, uh, if you're able to put them in the chat, we'll try and listen to those. I'm just gonna do a check-in with our tech support from Vanity Fairs. Are they are the participants able to raise their hands if they would like to or ask questions in the chat? Is that a possibility? Because that was the hope when we were doing this. We wanted it to be interactive. It seems like that's not um, the, that's not working. So um, I'll just say thank you for attending. For those of you that were able to attend, um, you have about five minutes or so. I think until oh, actually more than five minutes. You have a little bit of a break, and um, then you can head over to your next section. Thank you. I'm seeing also that there's a Q&A button. So perhaps if the chat is not working in the webinar chat, there might be a possibility for folks to write in the Q&A, the, um, the button that says that sort of in the middle beside participants. So if I missed anybody, apologies for that. I'm not quite sure how we can get you to ask your questions. Nabil, do you want to try again to see if you're able to unmute and, and, and say anything? I'm, I think you might be able to now. Oh, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I just clicked a button, allowed to talk. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> try that. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, can everyone hear me? Are you able to hear me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I can hear you. Keep going. It, it, it looks like I have to make you a panelist or something to allow you to talk. So if anybody does want to talk, I, I will allow you to talk. And then after that, I have to change you. Sorry about all the tech issues. I'm going to take a guess on this name. Alisa, did you want to ask a question? I recognize the name over here. Mr. Tyler Spencer, did you want to ask a question? Yes. 
I've been told that chat is not allowed, it's not open, but the Q&A is. That's what I've been told from the tech team. So Nabil, if you want to say anything, feel free, or Mr. Travis Spencer or anybody else. I've given permissions for you folks to chat if you want to. Do you guys have any questions? Exactly. We thought there was going to be a presentation. No questions here. Sure, if that was the question for me, can you repeat it? If it was, I think I missed it. Okay. Uh, okay, no, you don't. I see it now. No questions. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you for joining and enjoy your next session. I'm leaving, right? I'm going to wait until we get more, um, if we get more participants before I start, I believe I'm trying to look at my end. I see one, two, three, four showing. I know three of us are techs and I'm not quite sure if there's one person that's um, left over from the first section. So I'll wait to see. Please like text me if you think I've missed something. Mm -hmm. Can I just maybe get a confirmation if we have a, attendees that is waiting for the presentation? I will start, but I just want to make sure that we actually have an attendee waiting for the If you are here as an attendee and you see the little um, icon that says q and I wonder if you could just write in the chat, uh, yes, I'm waiting for the presentation. I will start. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to wait. If, you're, if you are waiting for a presentation, use that icon. Q&A, yes, I'm here, ready for the presentation, and I will begin. Otherwise, we're just going to wait a bit.
I'm, I'm still not sure that we've gotten any other parents, so I'm just trying to keep my eye on things. But if you think I've missed something, please let me know. Again, uh, watch for the Q&A because everybody has access to that button that says q and I'm not sure if we still have a parent in here or if from the last session or if this is for the new session. So I've stopped screen sharing, but I'll, I'll, I will screen share again in a moment.
Nabil, do you want to try and do a test to see if we can hear you? I think earlier I could hear you. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Yeah, that works perfectly. So if uh, I believe our next session is 8.05, so maybe for that, if you want to jump in and say anything, then feel free. OK, sounds good. Thank you. Thanks.
I'm just checking in on the start time for the next one. I believe it's a approximately around now, but I won't start the presentation yet. We'll just wait to see if we have a few more people join. Okay, so um, because I'm not 100% sure whether or not we still have a person left over from our first one or not, I think I'm just going to quickly go through our, our presentation. Um, and um, if that is a person that was waiting for the presentation, I apologize if you've been waiting all this time, we're going to try and go through. So welcome to our equity presentation where you can learn about the supports, programs, and resources available for racialized and other equity-seeking, or I like to now call them equity-deserving students. And we were hoping to have an interactive question and answer to follow, and that would require you using the Q&A icon that you will find at the bottom of the Zoom, any questions you put in there, we will do our best to respond to. And if we're not able to respond today, then we certainly will try and follow up with an email. So inclusive education, um, I'm not going to read to you everything that's there, but I'll start with the top. Diversity refers to the presence of a wide range of human qualities and attributes within a group, organization, or society. Um, and some of those dimensions are listed there. They're what we would consider the Ontario Human Rights Codes um, protections. Equity, we're talking about equity, we're referring to a condition or state of fair, inclusive and respectful treatment for all people. And equity and equality are not the same things as we have uh, learned. And our goal is to have inclusive education at OCDSB. And so that means it's education that's based on the principles of acceptance and inclusion of all students. We want to make sure that they see themselves reflected in their curriculum, their physical surroundings and their broader environment. On this slide, you're gonna see a list of some of the equity team, which is in blue there at the bottom, as well as the two names at the top, which are Mary Jane Farish and Juliet Robinson, our system principal of equity. We work in collaboration with the indigenous team and the superintendent is listed there and the principal. We also work with Jacqueline Lawrence as part of our team as a diversity and equity coordinator. 
And we work closely with other departments such as a program and learning innovation, student support services, um, the multilingu multilingual learners um, principal, and others that are not listed there. So some information that we wanted to share with you just for your understanding is that the OCDSB has a advisory committee on equity and it's known as ACE for short. And it helps the board of trustees to ensure that we're providing an equitable and inclusive educational space and work environment. So they meet fairly rec um, regularly. The agenda and all of that can be um, received from board services, and there's usually links to the virtual meetings that take place on the OCDSB calendar. If you're interested in learning more about that or want to attend one of those meetings, you're welcome to. In 2018, the OCDSB adopted and committed to the intent of the UN International Decade for People of African Descent from 2015 to 2024. And just this past Saturday, uh, there was an event to highlight this um, International Decade of People of African Descent and next steps going forward, what has been done and what, what continues to be needed to be done. I wanna talk a little bit about intersectionality. Uh, OCDSB is committed to building a culture of caring, uh, which prioritizes the dignity and well-being of students in inclusive and caring classrooms. So we know that our students have a variety of identities and many of them have more than one identity, and some of them may be on this list that we've got there. They may identify as Indigenous, as Black, as racialized, as Muslim, as part of the queer community, Jewish, multilingual lang language learners. Um, we may, they may identify as students with learning or attention exceptionalities, or perhaps they're just students that have disabilities. And we know that those can be both visible and non-visible. It's important for us to let students and staff and families know that all representation is important and it matters. We know that it matters for all students. One of the ways that we try to ensure that we are removing barriers for students that identify as African, Black, and Caribbean is with something known as the Sankofa Center of Excellence. It's a graduation coach program. And there are two sites. There's one at Ridgemont High School and one at Woodruff High School. And in these sites, they're, they're staffed by two OCDSB members and their names are written in the corner there. We've got Gwen at Woodruff and Joan at Ridgemont. And their job is to work with students and staff and families to ensure that they're supporting students um, so that they learn more about post-secondary opportunities. So, sometimes they have in-person or virtual workshops that are available to them. They have partnerships with some of the community members that are listed there and others that are not there to allow students to see a variety of pathways and things that they may be part of. Some other program objectives and the rules of the coach are listed here. As I mentioned earlier, we wanna make sure that our African, Black and Caribbean learners, um, if they're experiencing barriers to engagement or learning, or they're having um, concerns with their well-being, that we're made aware of that and can connect them with the right supports. We wanna make sure that we um, have this, um, sorry, we wanna make sure that the students and their families um, are aware of any situations that we can do to improve their academic learning. And also we wanna make sure that we're making connections. We identify and we facilitate connections to academic supports both in the school and outside of the school and different community resources for these African, Black and Caribbean students. And the role of the coach is listed there. I won't read all of that to you. I'll just highlight a few things. Um, that they will be doing in addition to what was listed above there, helping students perhaps to collect their 40 hours of community service, transition support, helping them perhaps uh, attend different field trips where the excellence and the black joy is highlighted and checking in on their well-being and ensuring that they are connected to other supports if needed. Most of the work that the Black Graduation Courses do is done in collaboration with other OCDSB staff members 
And I've highlighted there in sp specifically the student support coordinators and others. So some other supports that are provided, we know that there are identity specific uh, social workers. So we know that there's one for um, black students. We know that there's one for the queer community. We know that there's one for the indigenous community. We also know that there are um, identity specific guidance counselors. There's one for the queer community. As I mentioned before, we have student support coordinators and we'll hear from one uh, later in this presentation. And we also know that there are other clubs and things that are available for students to attend. And some of them are listed there, courses that they might participate in, including a Reach Ahead summer course. The Black Student Forum has just begun and it's a course that runs from November to May, uh, usually on Wednesday evenings. There's two students for every high school that are often chosen. Some students might have some high schools may have more than two students because they've chosen to come back to do some volunteer or mentor or mentee work. And this is just an old flyer from 2021 of a presentation that they created for staff and students. So as we mentioned before, we're always working in collaboration with other folks. And here is a list of some of the community resources that we tap into to ensure that we are providing a space safe, brave, and inclusive space for our students. Last November, we went on an equity road trip. It was an in-person and virtual event. And we invite you to share with us any ways or any information that you think that we can continue to work on to make sure that we are providing safe and brave spaces for our students. We look forward to taking some next steps together with you. A quote that I like to use when we're doing this equity work. From Angela Davis. Now, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to write them in the chat and we thank you. Nabil, if you wanna jump on and say anything, feel free. Hi everyone, greetings, and I hope you've enjoyed um, Lorna's uh, presentation. Um, as one of the student success coordinators, um, I, I support racialized students across the system. Um, if you have any particular questions regarding that, I'm also here to uh, take those questions and um, offer any uh, suggestions um, if you have any. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.
So technically, I think this is, um, not I think, I know this is the time for our next session. It's supposed to be from 8.20 until 8.35. Um, but I think because we just did that one, I'm just going to pause unless we hear from more folks. Does that sound all right, Nabil? Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like a plan for sure.
I actually am going to do it one more time because I realized that there was one mistake in my slideshow. So I'm just going to talk to myself. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and I know it's recording. So, but jump in at the back, at the bottom, Nabil, after I'm done it, because that little piece you just did was great. Okay, for sure. We'll do. do we, we have one more session. What time does it start? This is it right now. It ends at 8.35. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly run through this. After 8.35, we're done. We're off the hook. We can go. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Thanks. We're going to screen share. Oopsie. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Going to High School Equity Presentation. This is a place for you to learn more about the support programs and resources available for racialized and other equity seeking, or as we also like to call them, equity deserving students with an interactive question and answer to follow. My name is Lorna Evans. My pronouns are she, her, L. I'm an OCDSB equity instructional coach. And the way that you can get a hold of me is listed on the slide there. That's my email. Here's a few uh, definitions about inclusive education. When we talk about diversity, we're referring to the presence of a wide range of human qualities and attributes within a group, organization, or society. We know that they are include, but uh, are not limited to all of the protected grounds that are part of the Ontario Human Rights Code that are listed there. We know that equity refers to a condition or state of fair, inclusive and respectful treatment of all people. And equity does not mean treating people the same without regard for individual differences. Inclusive education refers to education that is based on the principles of acceptance and inclusion of all students. And we wanna make sure that our students at OCDSB see themselves reflected in their curriculum, their physical surroundings, and their broader environment in which diversity is honored and that all individuals are respected. Here you have a list of some of the equity team. They're highlighted in blue there. We have equity instructional coaches. We have student support coordinators. We have a transgender student support coordinator. We also have two black graduation coaches that are not listed here, um, Gwen and Joan, who are in two black excellence sites. We work in cooperation with many other um, departments and some of them are listed as well. So we just wanted to share some information about um, some things that we also have part of the district. There is a advisory committee on equity, which is also known as ACE, and their job is to help the Board of Trustees, trustees to ensure that uh, equitable and inclusive education is taking place and that the work environments uh, support students' achievement and well-being. So what they do more specifically is listed there, and you're also invited as a personal invitation for you to join if you would like to. There's a, a virtual aspect to that. If you want to know more information about that, go to the OCDSB website, the board services, and find more information there. We also wanted to share that in 2018, the OCDSB adopted and committed to the intent of the UN International Decade for People of African Descent. And just this past Saturday, there was an event that was highlighting this work that the OCDSB is in partnership with other community groups has done and will continue to do. We know that uh, our students, our staff, and our families identify in a variety of ways, and more than one way. And we understand that this intersectionality is important for us to recognize. 
We want to make sure that we're building a culture of caring, which prioritizes the dignity and well being of students in inclusive and caring classrooms. And so, some of their equity seeking or equity deserving students and allies may identify in one of the ways listed below or something that's not there. We know in representation always matters for all of our students. We want to highlight the Sankofa Center of Excellence Graduation Coach Program. It's committed to advancing the academic success of African, Black, and Caribbean students in the OCDSB. And as I mentioned earlier, there are two sites, Richmond High School and Woodruff High School. And Gwen works out of Woodruff and Joan works out of Richmond. Part of involves ensuring that there are pathways to excellence for our students, and that might be a virtual or in-person workshop to let them know more about what's available, what opportunities there are for them. They work in partnership with some of the community organizations that are listed there, as well as others. The objectives of the program and the role of the coach are listed there for you to know um, more about that. They might help with credit accumulation. They might help um, with volunteer hours, making sure the students are doing their volunteer hours, transitioning from grade eight, grade nine, or transitioning from high school into post-secondary. And all of this work they do in collaboration with other educators, as well with our student support coordinators. Some other supports that are available for students include um, so access to social workers that are identity specific. So we have Black social worker, Indigenous uh, social worker from the queer community. There's a guidance counselor as part of the queer community that students have access to if they wish. We have student support coordinators that work with Muslim, racialized, and Black students. There are virtual spaces where students can check in. There's a virtual space for Jewish, Muslim, Black students. We have Black Excellence, Equity, and other MSAs, Jews, uh, Jewish student unions, and other spaces for students to connect. There are courses that are identity specific. We have worked together to create a Black Studies course. There's also a Reach Ahead summer school course for students that are in grade eight or in grade nine, where they can either do a credit ahead of time before starting high school or after they've completed grade nine, may choose to do one of these courses to reach ahead. This is a poster from a previous um, Black Student Forum event. Uh, this is taking place right now, grades 10 to and up, are part of a year-long course from November to May. They have a workshop that they will host at the end of the school year, and two students from every high school get to attend this. And sometimes there's more because students might choose to go back to volunteer or be mentors or mentees. Here's some of the helpful community resources. It's just a, a handful of a few folks that we connect with so that we can do this equity work. We had a road trip last November. It was held in person and it was virtual. And we're looking to uh, we're looking for information to help shape the next steps that we can take together. So this is an invitation for you to reach out to us. If there are other supports that you think you may need as a student or in families, please let us know. A quote to help us as we do this work and we break down the barriers. If you have any questions or comments, we want to thank you for being here. Please reach out to us in the chat, or if you'd like to email myself, I'm there, lorna.evans at ocdsb.ca, or Nabil, who is going to unmute and speak for a few moments right now. His email is also there. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed your present, uh, Lorna's presentation. Um, as she mentioned, I am the Student Success Coordinator with the Equity and Inclusive Initiatives Department, uh, supporting racialized students in many or various different ways. If you do have any questions or concerns, please feel free to forward them to the two emails uh, suggested on the screen. Thank you so much. We wish you a great evening. Okay, I think that's a wrap. Vanity Fairs, does that sound good to you?
Are we good to go now, um, Lorna? Yeah, I think so. Nabil, if you have a second, can you call me or are you too busy? Uh, no, yeah, I can for sure. I'll give okay, you a shot I'm right going to log off. Okay, bye. I think Let's we're good. I didn't hear otherwise, so I'm going to assume we're good. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Thank you.